This is the greatest feeling ever. Not being able to put a story down is simply what I live for when reading manga. So I found five outstanding series that you probably haven't read. And, well, they ruined my entire sleep schedule because I stayed up until 5 a.m. multiple times reading them. But the best part of all is that they're all great for entirely different reasons. Like, one is stupidly hilarious, one will have you scared to be alone at night, and one will have you thinking about everything that has gone wrong in your life. Now I'll be yapping about all of the beautiful things, things I didn't love, and whatever other fuzzy, tingling feelings I felt when reading. So enough messing around, let's just dive into the first series. Innocent is a fictionalized retelling about the executioner who killed 3,000 people, Charles Henry Sanson. And that Sanson legacy struck more than just the fear of God into absolutely everyone. So if you were to imagine what the most bloodied executioner of all time looked like, I'm sure you would probably think of some ruthless, heartless, macho, emotionally deprived animal. But uh, this is him in the first chapter. He goes against all prior preconceptions. He's a fucking crybaby. He's overly emotional and super, super sensitive. Charles Henry Sanson is the kind of guy that just wants people to accept him. But everywhere he goes, the only thing people see in him is that Sanson legacy as if it was tattooed right across his face, leading him to despise everything there is about executioners. So maybe this makes you wonder how this dude right here is supposed to turn into this dude right here. And it was only after witnessing his parents jamming out to some Kivion in the bedroom that he stopped being a whiny little shitter just to prove his father wrong. He realized that nothing in his life was going to change unless he put his own foot forward to make that change himself. And the only way to really do that was to fully embrace that Sansa name he hated so much. Now, to be honest, there are some plot points that I don't love about Innocent. It wasn't that exceptionally compelling, eagering me to turn the next page, but what I can say is that the artwork by Shinichi Sakamoto is some of the best goddamn artwork I've ever seen. So even at times when I thought the plot was just meh, it literally didn't matter because I needed to see what beautiful ass shit the author was gonna draw next. So Innocent becomes a pretty fascinating and stunningly beautiful drama that you should definitely check out. So I have a bit of a different relationship with Grand Blue than the rest of the manga on this list. Because as unlikely as it may seem, I tried watching the anime and just wasn't feeling the vibes the show gave off at the time. But for some reason, whenever I'd go on something like my anime list, I would see the manga rated so fucking high. Like I dropped the anime after 3 episodes and couldn't understand how Grand Blue was in the top 10 highest rated manga. Like, I've never heard anyone talk about this series, so I knew at some point I was definitely gonna read it just so I could understand where this rating was coming from. And holy Dungeness Crab did it surprise me. Iori is your typical no host having virgin about to go to a beautiful seaside university. The only problem is that going there would mean having to leave his home to go live with his uncle. However, Iori saw this as the perfect opportunity, since in high school he went to an all-boys school meaning this change of scenery would be the perfect chance to completely change himself. And upon arriving, it couldn't have been more dreamlike. The sound of the ocean waves, the shining rays of the sun, a beautiful town by the sea, and boom! Immediately, he scopes out a fucking smoke show. Literally nothing can make all of this go to shit. Eerie's dream life was just a doors opening away. Too bad all of it was a dream. Iori would try his hardest to stay away from this sausage party that was just inches away from him, but he just couldn't contain his inner alcoholic demon. All the glorious dreamlike desires Iori so fondly wished for started vanishing right before his eyes. But hey, there's a small silver lining, maybe he wouldn't find his dream life, but at least he was going to have some fun, make some good relationships, and whatever life experiences that comes from this degenerate diving club. 
Now, I definitely made this sound way more serious than it really is, but Grand Blue is just a lot of goofy ass shit. It's ridiculously over the top in the same comically good way something like Gintama is, and I honestly have to say, I just couldn't stop reading. It's not because the plot is that riveting or it's so hilarious that I can't stop laughing, it's a lot more subtle than that. Dart reading, I always thought it was pretty good, it was decently funny at times, I really liked some of the characters and interactions, but by the time I caught up to the manga, man, I was actually invested. I'm invested into the character relations and little harem circle that's formulating. Like, fuck, I want to know what's going to happen next. And I was totally not expecting this level of investment from this manga that seems like a stupid fucking comedy. And in my opinion, it's an actual entertaining slice of life comedy with a little romance mixed in. And nobody talks about it. So I wholeheartedly recommend you give it a try. Honestly, the reason why I picked this set of manga to recommend was because of a specific series I just so happened to stumble upon. One day I was doing the good old scrolling on the YouTube and after watching a certain Mr. No Bones video, I was extremely tempted to read this. And I started it at 1.30 AM that same night and I kept finding myself saying, ah, I'll just read one more chapter. And before I realized it was 5.30 AM. And I had to wake up in three and a half hours for my very important lecture. But I just couldn't put it down. And maybe this was because of a crippling cycle I'd been going through for multiple weeks at this point. I would stay up until 2 to 4 a.m. every night listening to a new JCS criminal psychology video. So how absolutely perfect was it that I found my dearest self with Malice Afterthought? It matched the fascinating crime, thrill, and drama I was seeking the pleasure of each and every night. And it also just so happened to be one of the best manga I've ever read. So after finishing it, I needed more. I craved for the stunning artwork and intriguing edge of your seat thrill this manga injects straight into your veins, which then led me to slap around on my keyboard for whatever else the author had created. And it just so happened the same author and artist had started this manga in 2021. So let me give you a quick summary of what it's about. This guy Jin shows up for his detective job, where this mansion has been robbed, yet the single owner Haikawa Juzo hasn't picked up any calls. In fact, he hasn't been seen in years. Even though no one has supposedly lived in this house for years now, it's oddly well kept. There's seemingly no dust anywhere, the place even has electricity, yet a bit more suspicious is the oddly placed children's room for a single man that reportedly had no children. But all of that pales in comparison to this. Continuing the investigation, Jim fumbles around with a random assortment of DVDs, where he finds a lone, single, black-covered one. And for those of you who don't know what this could have meant, there's only one possible option. <laughs> That's right! It's a porno! Let's go! Children were confined in the basement, there's even a pile of scrawny corpses in the corner, and with the little chance of survival, they were only left with a single option. Who are these children? Who is the owner, Haikawa Juzo? And is he actually the one who committed these crimes? This series gives me lots of hope and promise for the same thrilling adrenaline that my dearest self with Malice Afterthought pumped straight into me. But there's just one thing that fucking sucks, and it's that there's just not enough chapters translated so far. However, I can guarantee you not a single person watching this video has read this manga. Mostly because my anime list tells me only 835 people have read this. So we gotta boost this number up. PTSD Radio is a conglomerate of a few interweaving short stories, where each of these characters continually have these inexplicable haunting experiences. Everything would seem normal one day, but then the next, you could just be relaxing, laying in bed, then suddenly feel a slight pull on your hair. Or maybe every single night, you feel this terrifying presence staring at you in your sleep. 
Or maybe every time you look in the mirror, you see this. <laughs> PTSD Radio is a horror manga with stunning visuals that will be pan fried seared right into your mind. On top of that, the manga has a fascinating structure that I haven't really seen done before. It simultaneously has five or so stories continuing at the same time, as it jumps between perspectives following each chapter. And with every passing chapter, you're given a new haunting visual while slowly being drip fed what is happening to everyone. And holy fucking toenail juice, the artist of this manga can really draw some freaky ass shit. I would also like to let it be known that I hate everything horror. It's probably because I'm a little baby back bitch who likes to suck his thumb and hold on to his mommy, but I just can't stand horror. It'll have me fucking spooked for weeks. And on top of that, I hope I'm not the only one who does this, but whenever I consume anything horror related, I'll get these random ass intrusive thoughts. Like I'll just be walking to the bathroom and then suddenly as I have my hand on the doorknob, I'll think of all of this in like 0.001 tenth of a second. Remember this, Brett? Yes. Remember the spooky thing you just watched recently? Well, it's right behind this door. Oh god, why did I just remember that? Okay, okay, you know, calm down. You know, nothing like that even really exists. And hey, even if there was one behind this door right now, you just gotta open up the door really fast and beat the fuck out of it. <sighs> okay. Alright. Three. Two. One. We're good. We're good. Oh, thank God. I hate horror more than anything, and I read all of this just for you. And to be honest, despite my hate, it's pretty good and a super quick read. So if you're into visually stunning horror, then check it out. Night Patrol Sensei is an autobiographical manga series written by a teacher named Osamu Mizutani. It recounts tales spanning across 12 years where Mizutani would venture out into the night staying by the sides of vulnerable teenage students. And some would be in gangs, some addicted to drugs, some sold their bodies, and some wanted to no longer live. Mizutani would hear out the brutally tragic stories of any children in need. He'd become that ear to finally listen when no one else had before. And without fail, for seemingly no reason at all, he'd reach out his hand to whoever needed it. And to be real, it's honestly a little unbelievable that someone like this actually exists. But it's true, Mizutani helps anyone and everyone, and a lot of people need help. Now, in this manga, every chapter revolves around another student that has asked for Mizutani's help. So I want to tell you about one specific chapter that really touched my small, lifeless, shriveled up heart. And it's about a boy named Hugo, who stopped going to school to join a biker gang. And one night after doing whatever a biker gang does and barely managing to escape from the cops, he continues to drive his bike around until he sees this. Pulling his bike over, he learns about how at this exact place, at this exact time, one of Mizutani's students had ended his life. And, well, fuck. After hearing someone tell you something so deeply personal about themselves, it feels a little unfair to, you know, not give them a proper exchange of personal information. So Yugo goes on to share things he's never shared before. My mom, she's blind from birth. She had me when she was 21. In fact, someone raped her when she was coming home from work. That's how she got pregnant. Everyone told her to have an abortion, but she left her parents so she can keep me. Don't you think she's amazing? She didn't have to, but she gave birth to me and raised me. Then, as you turn the next page, you see this. And from this point on, Yugo decides to start turning his life around. He starts going back to school and even tells one of his pals that he doesn't think he'll go to the gang anymore and that he should join him. Yet of course, who would ever listen to that? So this friend continues to go by himself. But that was the spark of the downfall. One night, that friend never makes it back home. <laughs> hey Yasu! It's me, Yugo! Where are you? I'm here! Come on, let's go! <gasps> let's go this way!
This is just one of like 30 different stories that are all equally as eye pissing as this one. However, even after finishing this manga, there's still one thing that lingers on my mind. And it's that this manga has left me very, very confused. Just hear me out. Like it's about horrific trauma that has no reason, no reason at all to resonate with me. Because I can't relate to the characters or the plot or any of the trauma that is experienced. So again, why? Why the hell does this manga just hit so fucking hard? And I don't know if I can answer that. I can dig deep and say, oh, this manga makes you want to be more empathetic, or there's so many deep, great messages in it, and it makes you just want to be a better person or whatever. And yeah, all of that is true, but I don't know. Those generic descriptors only go so far. So let me try to explain what about this manga was special by going down a different and weird, convoluted, story-esque explanation. And I'll start by saying, one of the many, and I mean, many great messages in this manga is that sometimes a child just needs a single good adult in their life. All it really takes is just that one person. And this alone made me think lots of thoughts. And I don't have thoughts. Usually I'm a completely head empty person. I don't reflect on my emotions or feelings. I have no meaningful thoughts in my head whatsoever because I'm my phone. I'm watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts or watching anime 24 seven. But reading this manga made me think about things made me feel sad, made me feel empathetic, made me wish that no one would have to go through the things that are experienced in this manga, and a little more specifically, made me remember a story in my life about how one fucking small act, I mean really small act from an adult had a great impact on me. Now I've always been one of those quieter kids, but for some reason in like 7th grade, this one time in this one specific class, with this one specific teacher, on this one specific assignment, I decided to raise my hand and share my stupid fucking life timeline or whatever bullshit it was. And you'd have to think I'm an absolute fucking psycho to share my entire life up to this point to an entirely brand new class and teacher that I've only known for like a week so far. But I did. And I remember it felt kinda good. It felt rewarding and fulfilling to share a bit about myself and be recognized by the teacher. Like, I remember the wholesome smile and little ass comment she gave me after I finished sharing. I think from that point on, it gave me just a little more self-confidence. And all it really took was for a single adult to have a welcoming environment. Now I tell you all this random ass story because just from this single message, I had this strange experience that I didn't even know was possible from reading manga. Like, I don't even know if I've ever intentionally remembered that random ass story. And it was only really sparked in me because when reading at times, it felt like Osamu Mizutani was directly speaking to you. It was almost like he was looking you in the eye and saying, hey, all these bad things happen, but it'll be okay. And I guess what I said before was true. When someone tells you something so deeply personal about themselves, it feels a bit unnatural to not do the same thing. So go read Night Patrol Sensei even if it's just a single chapter. Because this is the type of manga you finish a chapter of and just lay there, staring at the ceiling. And you can't help but just think on and on and on and on and on. If you enjoyed, then maybe consider watching another video or hitting that sub button. Thanks.